I want to thank uh, Rabbi Daniel Schwartz, Schwartz for joining us now. He is with Temple Shir Shalom in West Bloomfield, and uh, he joins us via Zoom. Uh, Rabbi Schwartz, can you hear me, and how are you doing today? I can hear you. Thanks for uh, having us on. Well, yeah, I, I got to congratulate you. That's the best Zoom signal we have we have had from anybody. What's your secret? That looks good. Is that a backdrop that you have, or are you really sitting in uh, in your temple right there? It is a backdrop. It's a, a photo uh, of our sanctuary at Temple Shir Shalom that I put on so that. Uh, you don't get to see my bedroom behind me. No, it's nice. I, you know, we do that on our Zoom conferences. My technologically uh, skilled engineers here have all been doing the same thing. That looks really good. Thank you for joining us here. And People are going to now see you. There we go. On, uh, on Civic Center TV. So you heard our setup here a minute ago. Um, the weekends, they're, they're special time for people religiously and, and recreationally. And it's a tough time. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. I think sometimes uh, and it has been in the past, but I believe it also is currently and in, in going into the future, too, uh, that uh, as we look tonight for us, as we begin our Shabbat, for many on, on whether it's Saturday evening or, or Sunday or even yesterday, uh, that for many religious communities, here's the, the opportunity to get away from the challenges that we're facing, uh, to not focus on uh, the challenges, but to really see the blessings that are a part of our lives and to give us a little bit of hope as well. Uh, in a world that uh, is facing a lot of challenges at the moment. And that uh, by joining together in services with community, it, uh, virtually online, it gives us the opportunity to engage with others and get us out of our homes and the, the solitary uh, feelings that we might have. Rabbi Schwartz, how are you doing it at Temple Shir Shalom? I assume you've got some way to continue to connect with people uh, over the weekend. We do. So we've. Uh, this is actually going to be our fourth Shabbat, our fourth weekend of leading services virtually with nobody uh, in the sanctuary uh, except for uh, the rabbis and our cantor. And we place ourselves uh, in different areas so that we are uh, making sure that we're practicing social distancing and, and putting ourselves in a, in a safe way as best we can. Uh, but we, uh, we offer a number of different ways for people to be able to view us. So we have a YouTube channel, uh, Temple Shir Shalom, and we have all of our services that are broadcast there. We have services that are on our Facebook Live. So simultaneously with, uh, with YouTube, we, uh, Rabbi Moskowitz and myself uh, will uh, put up our Facebook accounts and people can join us that way. Uh, and then some of our services we actually do through Zoom as well. Uh, and for those, we require somebody to, to reach out to us so that we can send them the, the link just to make sure that it's members of our community and people who are supposed to be on the, the, uh, the Zoom yeah. service with us. That's a great, great thing you're doing. Uh, all, uh, all, all kinds of houses of worship are doing the very same thing and trying to connect in a wide variety of ways. It is a little unusual, I know from personal experience, because we do this program called State of the Communities, where we bring together a number of our community leaders for a program, usually in front of an audience of a couple of hundred people. We did it just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we did it with nobody in the house. And, and it's probably a little bit different for you as well when, when no one's in front of you in person it's definitely a strange feeling uh being in the in the congregation looking out and having empty seats uh and only looking at computer screens uh, and so it's uh it's a different feeling and it's almost like we're practicing or in a in a dress rehearsal uh, as we're going through thank goodness uh, through all of this uh, trouble and hard times uh, thank goodness we have this technology and the technology that uh, many of our houses of worship had and already had and are putting in place. We couldn't have done this three, four, five years ago. This we would have all been on a conference call. Yeah, you know, it's, it's amazing. And, and the technology that we have today to be able to solve some of the challenges that we have, uh, even as a community, the, the clergy in our community, um, Jewish clergy, on Wednesday night, as we begin the Passover seders and Passover celebration for the Jewish community, uh, we've done some recordings so that uh, Jews all over who are at home by themselves that want to participate in a in a, cert, in a seder and the and the service that we do around our dinner tables um, can be with others and have one led for them. Um, and so there's a great partnership, and whether it's from um, clergy of other faiths, uh, Jewish clergy that we've learned from, uh, there's there's Facebook groups for us as clergy to be able to link with others and connect with them and learn from each other as well. Uh, to be able to connect with our congregants, with our community at large. Well, no, it's great. With with Easter coming up, with uh, Passover coming up, it's time when families get together, and uh, and and you know we we can get a couple of people together. But I I guess 
I shouldn't be going to somebody else's home for Easter or Passover. We should keep ourselves at our home and figure it out figure out a way to do that virtually. It I, I don't think the governor really wants us going over to somebody's home for Passover. Is that what you're you're recommending? That's our strong recommendation. Uh, we don't think you should be going to somebody else's house either. Uh, and part of it is is we have the platforms to be able to do it virtually and, and in a safe way. Uh, unfortunately, there are a lot of tragedies that we hear about and, and have affected our community as well um, by people who have been in contact with uh, others with coronavirus and have contracted it as well. And we want to make sure that everybody stays safe. And uh, the best way to do that is by remaining at home, um, staying safe and uh, avoiding contact with other people. And so even on the holidays when we're used to coming together, um, we sent out a message to our congregation that is, as a Jewish community, it's not the first time that we haven't been able to celebrate uh, together and that for thousands of years, we've been figuring out ways that we can still celebrate this, this holiday uh, by telling the story, by eating matzah um, and fulfilling the, the commandments that we have, even by ourselves at home. Um, and we can still do that at home by ourselves um, it's nice to be with other people. And so sometimes you can, if you don't have uh, the ability to use a computer for that, calling them on the phone and having uh, your phone on speaker to be able right. to, to be with others. Well, we had we have a list of terms here that have come up during the uh, coronavirus. One of them on that list is social distancing. And and uh, a lot of people are, are changing that and we're calling it physical distancing because there's no reason why we cannot stay socially connected if, uh, if we can't even be right in the same room with each other and that's what we're trying to stress and 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 hopefully that's what's going on in uh, houses of worship across metro detroit absolutely and i think that's the, the blessing of being able to, to still join together virtually as a community um is to have others you can reach out to and be a part of it rabbi anything you want to add before we say so long I I want to say thank you for having me on and i just wish uh, all the listeners and the viewers out there that you uh, uh health and safety and uh and peace same to you. Thank you very much for joining us, and uh, we, we appreciate it. We will uh, clearly stay in touch.